All right, Shalom. Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayim La, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baruch Hakodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name Yahweh Shai's the name is only begotten Son, who the world evenly calls Jesus Christ. Baruch Hakodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, only way to worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And um. This lesson pretty much inspired by the elder Ariala, you know, a, a, the brother, you know, hella, uh, give hella motivation, man, you know, and um, just encourages brothers to keep going and, and, and giving brothers different insights, you know, of uh, 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 different things, you know, and um, this is something that he shared with the brothers in the chat, you know, and uh, the spirit hopped on me just to put something on wax um, pretty much based off that. So pretty much going to go into it. I encourage you brothers. I'm, I'm, I'm screen sharing, but um, pretty much is going to stay on, on, on what I'm showing. Um, encourage brothers to go through these precepts, man. You know, um, that's a part of uh, uh, what this lesson is going to be about, you know, having that uh, uh, mastermind mentality, you know, of going and proving these things, having the confidence that these things say what it says and not just uh, because uh, I said it or an apostle said it or an elder said it or, 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 or so forth and so on, man. You know, having these things within within your spirit first and foremost. But um, without further ado, now it starts off like this. I believe um, the elder told me the name of the book. I don't remember. Lord willing, if he watched this video, you know, he'll put the book in a, a comment section. Lord willing. But um, it says I'm gonna start right here. It says so that there may be no misunderstanding as to what is meant by the term a properly developed ego. Now, ego. Let's go into the word ego. It says ego by 1707 and metaphysicists, the self that which feels, acts, or thinks from Latin ego, right? So ego is pretty much self-confidence. You know, let's go to Google. I ain't pretty too much. Um, give us a lot. A person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Self-esteem, self-importance, self-worth, Self-respect, self-conceit, meaning self-thought, the word conceit is thought, self-image, self-confidence, right? So believing in what? A believing in yourself, believing in, in, in that the Lord is working through each and every last one of us, man. You know, not to believe in yourself like you sometimes. Nah, believe that Yahweh Shah is being formed within you, right? So let's go, uh, let's go back. Now it says. So that there may be no misunderstanding as to what is meant by the term a properly developed ego, meaning a properly developed mindset that Yahweh Shah is being formed within you. Right. It says we we shall describe briefly the factors which enter into its development. First, one must ally himself with one or more persons who will coordinate their minds with his in a spirit of perfect harmony for the attainment of a definite purpose. And that alliance must be continuous and active. You see? And it says what? That one must ally himself with one or more persons who will coordinate their minds. So went to that word co. Co means together. Ordinate means from Latin, ordinatus, past participle of ordinary means arrange or set in order. You know? So having a mindset of things being set in order. Now, it is written... Like I said, you know, when I get into the precepts, you know, you brothers follow along, you know, but uh, as it is written, this is first Corinthians. 14 and 40. And it says. So like you bear with me. This is Corinthians 14. And verse 40. And it says. Let all things be done decently and in order. So knowing that what? There's an order. There's a way to conduct yourself within this walk. You know, it says, uh, and you ally yourselves with, with, with men of that like mind. Because if we read up in verse 33, it says, for the most high is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. And when you go into the word confusion in the 33rd verse, it goes into disorder. 
The Lord is not the author of disorder. So everything is set in its proper order as it is written. Let me find this precept real quick, Salakia, because uh, I had some precepts written down and these 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 ones that the Spirit just gave me is not written down. Um, Salakia. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 23. It says, but every man in his own order, Yahweh Shai, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Yahweh Shai's at his coming. So everything has an order as it is written. Obey them to have the rule over you. So you know the order, you know uh, 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 who's the head and who, who, who comes after that, you know. So you follow in that in, in, in that set order. So it says one, one must ally himself with one or more persons who will coordinate their minds with his in a spirit of perfect harmony and that in, in, in the spirit of perfect harmony is, is the Holy Spirit, you know? The Holy Spirit is what brings everything back to our remembrance. That's the spirit of perfect harmony, all of us being within the Holy Spirit, right? It says for the attainment of a definite purpose and the definite purpose is ultimately salvation. So it says one must ally himself so that means what? This is 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. It says, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, that ye all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. That's that perfect harmony. That's all of us, what? Singing that same song, you know? All of us singing together, rejoicing together, Right? Uh, this is Romans 12. I'm just hit a couple precepts showing that that that, that 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 perfect harmony and align yourselves with one or more persons. As and, and it's all scripture. It's Romans 12 and 16. It says, "Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits, man." So that mean what? You know, be around a uh, 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 men of humble minds. You know. Men who are who are goal oriented, focused on what? Focused on the definite purpose, right? From there, let's get a uh, the book of Second Edris, chapter eight, in verse fifty one. It says, "But understand thou for thyself, you know, meaning what? Hey, 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 brothers, you go through these precepts. You do the study. It says, a righteous man study if to answer. It says, study to show thyself approved." In Galatians, I believe it's the sixth chapter. It says, uh, uh, approve your own work and you have glory in yourself and not in another. That's you being fully persuaded in your own mind. That's having that mastermind mentality. You know? You making sure that these things is, is, is saying what it's saying first for yourself, that you may be able to teach these things, right? The second address, 8 and 51, but understand thou for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. And when your mindset is set towards salvation, when your mindset is set towards uh, 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 the continual growth within Yahweh Shai, you're going to seek uh, uh, such who have that same mindset, man. Not guys that stagnant, half-assed, and bullshit. No, you're going to be focused on the goal that's at hand, right? From there, let's get a uh, Sirach the thirty-seven chapter. This is uh, Sirach thirty-seven and verse twelve. It says, but be continually with a godly man, right? Godly means a, a, a reverence or, or, or fear, a healthy fear of Yahweh Basham Yahusha, right? But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, right? That's why in, in, in 1 Corinthians it said what? We should be of the same mind and the same judgment. That's what it's saying. Who will coordinate their minds with his in a spirit of perfect harmony. So we're all working to the same goal. It says, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry, you know? Just like our first Corinthians says, man, if, if, if one member is um is uh, glorified, we're all glorified, you know? If one member uh, suffer loss, we all suffer loss. Roughly paraphrasing, I believe it's first Corinthians, the 12th chapter, we're a body. So from there, let's get first Corinthians 2, because it speaks about, it says, let's read this again. First, one must ally, ally himself with one or more persons who will coordinate, coordinate their minds with his in a spirit of perfect harmony for the attainment of a definite purpose 
and that alliance must be continuous and active. And the definite purpose is what? That Yahweh Shah may be formed within us. This is 1 Corinthians 2, because that's what's going to lead us to salvation. As it is written, wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. Our Lord and Savior, he is our wisdom. This is 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Yahweh Shah. You know? And I believe it's the book of Colossians that speaks about made after the image, you know, because that's that that that's the uh, uh, the ultimate goal, you know. That's why the scripture speaks about the body edifies itself in love unto the unto the perfect stature. So we're all learning to be uh, uh, like Yahweh Shai, you know. So we're all um, striving to be made according to that image. Mm. Oh, well, and I'll put it on the comment board, but um, let's go to Philippians, the second chapter and the 12th verse. It says, wherefore, my beloved, that he, as ye have always obeyed, not Philippians 2 and 2, so like, I'm sorry, it's Philippians 2 and 2. It says, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind, you know? And in that 12 verse, I'm going to just read it anyway, because it's, 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 it's heavy. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, so that's being goal oriented, making sure that you're striving for that perfection as well as each other, because what we all have that same mind. Right. To reach that definite purpose and that alliance must be continuous and active. Continuous and active. That's First Corinthians 15 and 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You know, that's the definite purpose is to receive salvation. In order to receive salvation, we must be made after the image of Yahweh Shai. You see? So it says, moreover, the alliance must consist of people whose spiritual and mental qualities, education, sex, and age are suited for aiding in the attainment of the purpose of the alliance. And that's why the Lord said what? This is uh, Revelation. This is Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of the heavenly father is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and the most I himself shall be with them and be their power. You know, as it is written, the flock of my pastor are men, roughly paraphrasing. So that's the alignment, the attainment of what the sex and age and suited aiding in the attainment of the purpose of the alliance. Right. So from there. Let's move on. It says second. Having placed himself under the influence of the proper associates, right? Having placed himself under the influence of the proper associates. And, and who might that be? This is Sirach 8 and 8. It says, despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction in how to serve great men with ease. Miss not the discourse of the elders. For they also learn of their fathers, and of them thou shalt learn understanding, and to give answer as need requireth. You see? So the first is what? Surround yourself with like-minded men. Second is putting yourself under proper associates. You know? Second, having placed himself under the influence of the proper associates, right? Putting ourselves under what? The influence of our elders. That's why it's written. This is Second Timothy. Is the book of Second Timothy, chapter three, and uh, verse fourteen. It says, "But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, knowing of whom thou hast learned them." Because it says, "What that the Lord will give us pastors according to His heart, which will feed us with knowledge and understanding." It says that our teachers shall not be removed into a corner anymore. So being assured of whom thou hast learned them from, because in the book of um, in the book of First Thessalonians, 
1 Thessalonians 2 and 13, it says, For this cause also think we the Most High without ceasing, because when ye received the word of the Most High, which ye heard of us, so we heard it from what? Our apostles, our elders, right? Ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of the Most High, which effectively worketh also in you that believe. So when we heard this, we didn't believe that it was the word of men. We believe that this was the word of Yahweh Basham Yahushua, that he was speaking through men. He was speaking through his prophets. That's being assured of whom thou hast learned them from. Being, being fully persuaded in your mind that the men you're following, the men you're learning from are, in fact, the apostles and elders in, in the prophets that we're reading about within the scriptures. That goes back to what? That, that properly developed ego. You have the confidence in knowing that the work and in, 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 in effort you're putting in is being recognized in heaven, man. It says, second, having placed himself under the influence of the proper associates, one must adopt some definite plan by which to attain the object of the alliance and proceed to put that plan into action. And that's what? That's a, let's go to Sirach, the sixth chapter. Sirach 6 and verse 32. It says, my son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. So it says one must adopt some definite plan. A definite plan is what that uh, was written within these pages. Lord willing, we're going to uh, um, get uh, 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 more precepts uh, to go into it, right? It says, which to attain the object of the alliance and proceed to put that plan into action. The plan may be a composite plan created by the joint efforts of all the members of the mastermind group. And the plan has already been put together. You know, we're following the blueprint. The blueprint was already given unto us, right? But it says, Sirach 6 and 32, my son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thy ear, thou shalt be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. See, that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's the first and the second, how they coincide together with each other. It says, be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him and let the foot and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thy heart and give thee wisdom at thy own desire. You see. That's the adopted plan. You know, it's taking heed to what our teachers. Putting ourselves under proper associates, right? So this let's go to first John five. Because this is how we uh, uh, um, achieve, you know. The plan or the purpose, this is a uh, first John five and one, it says, whosoever believeth that Yahweh is Mashiach is born of the most high and everyone that loveth him that is begot loveth him also that is begotten of him by this we know that we love the children of the most high when we love the most high and keep his commandments for this is the love of the most high that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous but whatsoever is born of the most high overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Yahweh Shah is the son of the heavenly father. So when we receive this word, we receive it not of men, but as in, but as in truth, the word of the most high. Which that faith was a, 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 a was 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 a gift that was given unto us from the heavenly father, you know, in order to what? In order to execute his plan into action. You see, and, 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 and to attain that, this is a second Peter, this is the book of 2 Peter 1 in verse 4. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, I, I call this the, uh, uh, the blueprint scripture, right? This is Peter. The, uh, the Yahweh Shah said, upon this uh, rock will I build my church. So Peter is the head of the church. And he's explaining the things that we need to do in order to attain salvation, right? And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. That's the first thing we have, right? Faith. We believe that Yahweh Shai is Hamashiach. We believe that he is the son of the heavenly father, right? That's the faith. That's what's going to allow us to overcome. 
That's what's going to allow us to attain that, that, that what? That definite purpose, right? It says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Virtue is what, man? You know, virtue is morals. It's a standard that you hold, that you hold yourself to. You see, it says a uh, uh, virtue goes back to moral strength, right? It says into virtue, knowledge. Knowledge is, 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 is what, man? How to balance that morals or, 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 or that, 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 uh, uh, that statue, that standard that you're living by. Knowing how to properly apply it when and where. It says, and to knowledge, temperance, which that temperance goes back into self-control, goes back into balance. You know, so all these things is, is, is allowing us to grow in the image of Yahweh Shah, to grow in the grace of the Lord. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience. Because when you start to, uh, 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 to mortify your members, right, self-control to start to balance things out within your life, that patience comes. That patience means suffering. So what? So you're killing your 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 you're mortifying your members. You're denying certain lusts and things that you might want to do. That goes into what the sufferings. That's the patience that you're learning. And patience, godliness, and that patience, that suffering that you go through, it, it, it gives you uh, uh, that that healthy fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. That's what godliness is. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness is what having love one toward another. You know. You can't say that you love the Lord, but you hate your brother that you see every day. Like it says in the book of First John, that, that don't add up. It says, into brotherly kindness, charity. And charity is what? The labor of love that we're putting forth, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. You know? Denying ourselves for what? For the sole purpose, for the, uh, for the, for the attainment of what? Of that goal, man. Being goal-oriented, right? Verse eight, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. You see, it says one must adopt some definite plan. This is the plan by which to attain the object. What's that? Salvation of the alliance and proceed to put that plan into action. And that's what we're doing through the spirit. You see, it says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see fall and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You see, he that lacketh these things. So we must be applying these things. Right. Put that plan into action. It says, verse 10, wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. You know, so we apply these things, we add these things unto ourselves, man. That entrance is going to be abundant, man. You see? So now it says, the third, one must remove himself from the range of influence of every person in every circumstance which has even a slight tendency to cause him to feel inferior or incapable of attaining the object of his purpose. Positive egos do not grow in negative environments. So basically that's saying what? That's saying a, 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 a cut off anything that's hindering or keeping you from what? Attaining the goal, right? And that's the way of wickedness. From there, let's get 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 15. It's 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. It says, be not conceived, conceived, <laughs> be not deceived, evil communications, corrupt, good manners, man. And when you go into that word communications, it's talking about your, uh, your communion, the people you hang around with. You see, corrupt, good manners. The good manners is what, man? It's our heritage. It's the royal law. It's what separates us from every, uh, uh, from all these other uh, uh, nations. You see? But if you're acting and you're following, you have the mindset of these other people that makes you inferior. So you want to separate yourself from 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 all all of that. You know, let's read that again. Third, one must remove himself from the range of influence of every person and every circumstance, which has even a slight tendency to cause him to feel inferior. That's the way of the heathen. That's having that weak mindset or incapable of attaining the object of his purpose. You see? 
So from there, let's get Psalms 101. This is the, the book of Psalms. Chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. You see? So it says, What? You walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Because what's the counsel of the ungodly? This is Wisdom of Solomon in the second chapter. And let's start at the 13th verse. This is the counsel of the ungodly right here. When you start at the second chapter, matter of fact, let me start at Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 1. I'm going to read down. This is Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright, our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy, neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. So this is the uh, the reasonings of the ungodly. You see? So let's jump down to verse 13. It says, he professeth to have the knowledge of the Most High, and he calleth himself the child of the Lord. This is how the ungodly looks upon us standing within our right mind, right? Verse 14, he was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. This is the verse, this is the uh, point, verse 16. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. So anything outside of the ways of Yahweh Basham Yahushah is filthiness, it's inferior. And this third, this third uh, uh, law says uh, with, within this book says what? One must remove himself from the range of influence of every person in every circumstance, which has even a slight tendency to cause him to feel inferior or incapable of attaining the object of his purpose. You see? And, 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 and this book wasn't, wasn't put together by a, a, a guy in the truth. So if a carnal man could come up with these things in order to uh, have success in, 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 in this carnal world, how much more us can use these things and apply it in the spirit? You know? It says, he abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed and maketh his boast that the most high is his father. You know? So from there, let's go to uh, 1 Peter 4 and 1. Because we read in 2 Peter the first chapter about what adding to your faith virtue to virtue knowledge knowledge temperance right finding that following that balance that self-control this is a uh, first peter 4 and 1 for as much then as yahweh has suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he that has suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin and that's you what that's you gaining that temperance that self-control it says verse 2 that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the most high. Because living in the flesh, that's inferior, man. That's carnal. That's easy. And us as soldiers, us as men of Yahweh Basham Yahweh hey, we want a challenge, man. Bridling your, 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 yourself, man. Bridling your own emotions, your thoughts, the things that you want to do in order to uh, serve Yahweh Basham Yahweh That's the challenge, man. Right? It says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. For the times past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Meaning what? That, that, that way that was inferior, man. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So the rest of the world looking at us like we're the crazy ones, man. Because we don't do the uh, sick, perverse, and wicked things that they do. You see? So that's why you must separate yourself from that. Because that what? That'll make you incapable of attaining the object of his purpose. Positive egos do not grow in negative environments. Those are negative environments, man. The positive ego is what, man? Attaining salvation through the mercy of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. It says, on this point, there can be no excuse for a compromise. 
and failure to observe it will prove fatal to the chances of success. So you got to you got to acknowledge that that's a problem. You see, because you acknowledge that's a problem, then you can move to fixing that problem. There can be no excuse for a compromise, man. You have to cut that out if you're uh, uh, hoping to attain that goal. It says the line must be so clearly drawn between a man and those who exercise any form of negative influence over him, meaning you got to cut that off, that he closes the door tightly against every such person, no matter what previous ties of friendship or obligation or blood relationship may have existed between them. And that goes to what our Lord and Savior said. This is the book of Luke. Chapter 14. This is Luke 14 and 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother, and that word hate means to love less. Why do you love, why do you love them less? Because they're not walking in the ways of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. That's not saying that you hate your mother or your father. No. The scripture says to honor them. It's talking about what, man? It's talking about uh, uh, their ways and how they conduct themselves, man. Let's get to rock. The uh 27 chapter real quick. This is uh, Sirach 27 and 11. It says the discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom, but a fool changes as the moon. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time. You know? So if you do got to go mingle with family members, hey, 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 set, set a little time. Hey, man, I, I can't be around this all goddamn day. <laughs> you know? Go show your face, man. You know, hey, 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 how you doing? Like it says in Sirach, and then get up early, man. Be not the last one to leave, you know? It says, if thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. You see, the discourse of fools is irksome and their sport is in the wantonness of sin. You know, it's talking all kind of bullshit all day, man. Things that you're not interested in. You got so-called uh, guys or friends in the world and these niggas all talking about smoking weed all goddamn day and, and, and popping another man's woman and all that madness, man. You separate yourself from those things, right? Back in Luke 14 and 26, if any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So that's denying yourself and denying everything else that's not according to the will of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah. So let's read this again. The line must be so clearly drawn between a man and those who exercise any form of negative influence over him that he closes the door tightly against every such person, no matter what previous ties of friendship or obligation or blood relationship may have existed between them. You see? Verse 27, Luke 14, 27. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And that's a part of the cross right there. Cutting those things off, right? Fourth, it says, one must close the door tightly against every thought of any past experience or circumstance which tends to make him feel inferior or unhappy. And what's that goes into, man? That goes into what? This is Second Edris, the 16th chapter. And I believe it's the 75th verse, 76. I'll start at 75. This is 2nd Edris 16 and 75. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. It says a just man falls seven times, but he picketh himself up again. So you can't allow those past experiences, those past failures, Right. To make you feel inferior or unhappy. We have to walk within the grace of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, as it is written. This is Psalms, the 32nd chapter. This is Psalms 32 and 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's who we hoping to be. Right. It says strong, vital egos cannot be developed by dwelling on thoughts of past unpleasant experiences. 
Vital egos thrive on the hopes and desires of the yet unattained objectives. And what is that? Psalms 32 and 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. It says what? Our faith is what overcometh this world, man. Verse 2. Blessed is the man unto whom Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. So that's what, man? That's that that's you striving to live after the image of Yahweh Shah. What's the image of Yahweh Shah? Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So you striving to live according to the standard to the best of your ability. Because I believe in doing these things, I will obtain the salvation. I will obtain what? Those objectives. That goal. You see? It says, verse 3. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into drought of summer. Salah. Verse five. This is the point. I acknowledge my sin unto thee and my iniquity. Have I not hid? I said, I will confess my transgressions unto Yahweh Basham Yahushai. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Salah. So that goes back in, 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 into what? That contrite and broken spirit, man. The Lord will not despise. The Lord said, this, this is who I will look. You know, that word look goes to the Hebrew word in the bot, which means to, uh, 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 to, to, to care for, to have favor for. You know? It says, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sins a lot. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee, in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. So that's the faith. You know, applying these things that's written. Because it says what? In Sirach, the second chapter, in the 10th verse, it's Sirach 2 and 10. Look at the generations of old and see that ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him, man? And the answer, this is 1 Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 61. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. So if our trust within these, is, is if our trust is within these words, is within uh, 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 Yahweh Shai, he come in the volume of the book. Hey, then we got it, man. We got to maintain what the things is written within these pages, keeping that humble and contrite spirit. You know, the greater thou art, the more humble thou shalt be, man. Uh, 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 loving thy neighbor as thyself, esteeming another uh, uh, more th th uh, than thyself. The things that's written within these pages. Continually examine ourselves to seeing if we're meeting the standard or, or, or see if we're growing in the image of Yahweh Shah, man. You see? From there, let's get a uh, Sirach 39 and 1. It says, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. So the man that, that, that's doing that, he's going to do what? I'm going to jump down to uh, verse 5. He will give his heart, his mind to resort early to the Lord that made him and will pray before the most high and will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. The same thing we read in Psalms, the 32nd chapter. It says, when the great Lord will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. He shall pour out wise sentences and give thanks unto the Lord in his prayer. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge and in his secrets shall he meditate, man. He shall show forth that which he have learned, meaning what? What, what, I, what I tell you in dark, that's what you proclaim upon the house tops. You see? Back up to the second, it says what? Having placed himself under the influence of proper associates, what? That's our apostles, our elders, our teachers, our leaders. One must adopt some definite plan by which to attain the object of the alliance and proceed to put that plan into action. The things you learn, you reteach that, man. You see? What did Paul say? Let's go to Philippians. It's the book of Philippians, chapter three. 
And let's start at eight. It says, yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss. That goes back to what? The third one, removing yourself from any influence of every person in every circumstances, drawing that line, closing that door, right? And not worrying about it, man. It says, Philippians 3 and 8, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shia, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Yahweh Shia. Hey, hey, everything on this side, this whole world is nothing but shit, man. You see? Because we, hey, 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 we the, it's the goal, being goal-oriented. This is Hebrews 11. And 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Yahweh Shai greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. That's goal-oriented. Let's go back to Philippians 3. And verse nine now, and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Yahweh Shai, the righteousness, which is of the most high by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain, in this, in this book right here, it keeps saying which to attain the object, right? It says, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, the redemption of our bodies. Wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. So we got to apply these things that's written. We have the mind of Yahweh Shad and we got to act like it. We got to we got to uh, uh, conduct ourselves as such. It says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Yeah, we ain't got it yet, man. That's why we need the correction. That's why we need brothers here to con continually hey, mold each other, man. Iron sharpens iron. That's why I said surround yourself. That's why the first one said what, man? Hey, hey, those of the same mind that can coordinate according to your spirit, man. It says, need, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that, if that I may apprehend that, for which also I am apprehended of Yahweh Shai. Brethren, so basically he's saying what, man? That I may obtain a salvation for the same reason why the Lord called me into this faith to preach salvation unto the others. It says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, right? Those things that make you feel inferior, dwelling on thoughts of past uh, unpleasant experiences, right? It says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, meaning what? Each and every day, getting better for Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, you know, becoming a better person, a better uh, uh, brother, uh, 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 a better servant, you know, each and every day, a better husband, a better wife, if, if it's a woman listening, man, applying these things that's written. It says, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of the Most High in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, man. And you want to surround yourselves with like-minded men that's going to press toward that mark, man. Goal-oriented, like Elder Ariala always say, we're focused on what? The kingdom of heaven. Better in ourselves each and every day for each other, man. Are you your brother's keeper? It says that we are alike to the Gentiles, to the Israelite foreigners, man. So we are ought to be an example unto each other. If you love Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, as you say you do, well, then you, you're going to love your neighbor as yourself. Meaning what? I, I want you brothers to receive the salvation as much as I want to. So I'm I'm what? I'm 10 times harder on myself, making sure that I meet the required uh, 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 standard so I can be an example. And, and, and shit, I hope all, each brother got that same thought, man. Because if I'm slipping, I'm fucking up. I want to look at a brother and be like, man, that's the example to follow, man. Yahweh Shai has been formed in that man. 
This is um, verse 14 again. Philippians 3 and 14. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of the Most High in Hamashiach Yahushai. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if any, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, the Most High shall reveal even this unto you. You know? So having, ha having that, that, that hope, that goal of salvation, man, and helping each and every last one of us get to that point. And how can I do that? By examining myself, making sure that I'm doing what's required of me. You know? Because I can't say shit unless I get the beam out of my eye, as it is written. So I'm going to end it on Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5. It says, Thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. Yeah, man. It's a lot of guys that came into this thing and fell off. Because why? Because they trusted in a man. They didn't trust that the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahusha was in that man, that it was the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahusha speaking through that man. Nah, they trusted in that man, and that's why they, they, they made flesh their arm. Meaning what? They, they trusted in that in, 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 in carnal things, man. They trusted in that man. Our faith, our trust is not in men. It's in the words of Yahweh Basham Yahusha, right? Verse 6, for he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabit it. Meaning what? You're going to be dried in a hole, dog. Verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope Yahweh Basham Yahweh is, man. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. Meaning what? When that hail comes. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Meaning what? Hey, 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 we're going to always produce. Going back to Psalms, the first chapter, it says what? Let's go back to that. It says it's going to end it on that, on that, on that Jeremiah, but we ended end it on this. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly, those that trust in man, are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know? So that's it, man. Lord willing, I hope that was edifying, encouraging, uplifting, you know, uh, 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 obtaining, you know, that that, 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 that that mastermind mentality, you know? Applying these different things to, to, to our daily life, man, a, a, so we may uh, 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 reach that goal, you know? I press toward the mark for the high uh, calling of Yahweh Shai, man. So Lord willing, that was edifying. You know, that's all I, I, I had through the spirit. You know, um, give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baruch HaKadosh, double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings, salutations to you brothers, to you few sisters that's watching, man, the water uh, uh, for all you brothers tuning in through the spirit. And um, shalom, brothers. You know, have a